Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today, as part of our nuclear fortnight series, we're spending two weeks talking about the use of the atomic bombs. We're doing this because today is the 75th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima, which took place on August 6th, 1945. As we get further and further away from the events, more and more people who participated are passing away. Uh, and so it is important that we acknowledge events like this and study them and reach out to individuals who were around at the time uh, to learn from them while they're still here with us. During World War II, Hiroshima was a yeah, about medium-sized Japanese city. Uh, it had a maximum of 380,000 people in it. Uh, it had a uh, large military base at Hiroshima Castle, um, and it had a lot of uh, military industrial stuff scattered throughout the city, um, as the Japanese did with many of their uh, workshop spaces and that sort of stuff. Uh, so they had a fair amount of manufacturing capability there and a standing military force. Uh, it was also an administrative center for Field Marshal Shuroko Hara. He had somewhere around 40,000 troops in the area, uh, in addition to a approximately 350,000 civilians, which was down slightly from the wartime high. However, with uh, the U.S. firebombing of cities, a lot of people were fleeing urban centers to less populated areas where they were less likely to be firebombed. Now, in this instance, as the war dragged on, the United States started dropping leaflets on Japanese cities telling people they were going to firebomb them and that they should leave these uh, military industrial centers. Um, so some people took the Americans up on the offer and uh, about 350,000 didn't. Uh, it's really hard to leave your homes and your jobs and go into the countryside where there is no infrastructure for you. So it, it's not like they made a conscious decision, there just wasn't an opportunity to do it. Hiroshima, it turns out, was a poor target for firebombing. Uh, in the ideal firebombing, you create a firestorm, which causes far more damage than the actual bombing itself. Uh, but Hiroshima has a number of rivers that goes through it, and that cause natural barriers that uh, could prevent the incendiary bombs uh, from creating fires which would spread throughout the entire city. For that reason, primarily, it was chosen as the main target for the first atomic bomb. Uh, this bomb is known as Little Boy, and it is a uranium gun type bomb. Uh, the idea being that uh, something called a pistol shoots a uranium atom into a ball of the uranium isotope U-235, which is fairly unstable. And when that gets hit, atoms split and it creates nuclear fission, uh, which is uncontained and would explode, destroying a city. In this instance, little boy had 141 pounds of uranium, uh, which turns out was enough to create a 16 kiloton nuclear explosion. Leading up to the attack, the Americans uh, had destroyed a tremendous number of Japanese cities via firebombing. And there were only uh, less than half a dozen left on their list that were simultaneously large enough to be worthy of a nuclear bomb and undamaged enough to show the destructive power of this bomb, because in addition to uh, being a destructive force that the US was trying to use to end the war, it was also a test of a brand new weapon. One had been detonated in the middle of the desert, but uh, nobody had any idea how it would react in the middle of a populated city.
In the event, the uh, U.S. military tried to leave as little to chance as possible. They had a uh, composite group of about 15 bombers, B-29 super fortresses, which were modified uh, specifically for the various missions required during this. Uh, on August 6th, three of these bombers were used to uh, scout the three possible cities that were going to be targeted. And uh, given what the weather was like over each of those cities, a decision would be made uh, by the flight commander, Colonel Paul Tibbetts, who was flying in Ola Gay. Uh, he would decide which city to wipe off the map. Uh, as it turns out, Hiroshima, Kokura, and Nagasaki were the three cities that were at the top of the list, and the weather report from Hiroshima was satisfactory, so Tibbetts stayed on his uh, primary mission. He was escorted by two other bombers, uh, one called the Great Artiste, would carry instruments which could uh, measure the effects of the bomb. Remember, this is partially scientific, uh, and another, uh, which was unnamed at the time of the raid, but would later get the name Necessary Evil, perhaps the most appropriate name of any of the aircraft on this flight, um, would be along to photograph the explosion. And we've all seen this photograph of the mushroom cloud rising over Hiroshima. So Colonel Tibbetts was flying his own personal bomber, the Enola Gay, which was named after his mother, uh, and that is the aircraft which had the bomb on it. A further aircraft was standing by on Tinian uh, in case Enola Gay had any sort of issue and the bomb had to be moved into another one. Uh, again, the U.S. military wasn't leaving anything to chance. They had drilled and drilled and drilled on this mission. The flight was six hours long, which meant that uh, they had to take off around two in the morning to arrive over Hiroshima at eight o'clock in the morning. The night of August 5th into the morning of August 6th, some 605 B-29s bombed a half a dozen cities in southern Japan. That was just the power of the U.S. military at this point. The Japanese could not contest these bombing raids. So hundreds of American aircraft are operating over the engagement zone. Uh, like I said, uncontested. Japan just didn't have the fuel or the trained pilots or the fighter aircraft to contest all of these raids. Uh, and at a certain point, the decision had been made that rather than contesting the raids that they could, they were going to hold on to as many of these forces as possible for the invasion of Japan, which they expected would come in the near future. Uh, and so Hiroshima had been on and off of alert as various flights of aircraft flew overhead. It had been on alert when uh, the scout aircraft had flown overhead to see the weather. Um, but the arrival of three B-29s overhead was no significant uh, threat to the city as far as the Japanese knew. 600 aircraft showing up overhead, that's bad. Three aircraft, that's just... Uh, a day in the life of Japan under siege uh, as the United States tightened its stranglehold on the home islands preparatory to an invasion. So people went about their daily lives. At approximately 8.09 in the morning on August 6th, Colonel Tibbetts lined up for his final approach and uh, turned over control to his bombardier who used his bomb site to line up on a bridge in the center of Hiroshima. Uh, as it turns out, there was some ground wind and the, the bomb ended up slightly off target, but still 
over the center of Hiroshima and uh, close counts with hand grenades, horseshoes, and atomic bombs. Uh, at 8.15, the bomb was dropped and exploded at approximately 2,000 feet. Uh, as it dropped, the explosion was forced down towards the city center. Uh, the heat of the explosion, which destroyed approximately five miles of city, uh, created a firestorm which would destroy 69% of the city. Uh, this left just four Japanese cities with populations more than 50,000, uh, less than 50% destroyed by American bombing raids, just to give you an idea of how thoroughly the United States was destroying Japan. In addition to destroying the military industrial complex uh, dispersed throughout the city, the bomb also destroyed a lot of the civilian infrastructure many of the homes. Uh, the mayor of Hiroshima was eating breakfast with his son and granddaughter, uh, and they were all killed instantly. The uh, hospitals were by and large destroyed. 90% of the doctors and nurses in the city uh, were killed or injured immediately. Only Dr. Terafumi Sasaki remained on duty at the Red Cross Hospital to treat the wounded and he would go on to pioneer uh, identifying the effects of uh, radiation exposure and the three stages of uh, radiation poisoning and whatnot that, uh, that uh, the people subjected to the atomic explosion experienced. The city was utterly destroyed, uh, so much so that there was very little communication into or out of the city uh, to the point that the Japanese, that the rest of the Japanese islands didn't even know anything had happened. And that's gonna be the subject of our next video. Thank you guys for watching today on the 75th anniversary of the destruction of Hiroshima by atomic bombs. Take a moment to think about the roughly 70,000 civilians who were killed outright and 260,000 civilians and 20,000 military personnel uh, who lost their lives as a result of the dropping of the bomb. That represents one third of the population of Hiroshima. If you have any questions or comments, Drop them in the comment section down below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Um, if you would like to support our museum and our YouTube channel, check the description below for ways you can, uh, as well as links to our other Nuclear Fortnite video series. Uh, and remember to like, share, and subscribe so you're notified when we put out new content, such as the video on uh, Japan finding out about the use of the bomb, which will go up tomorrow. Thanks for watching.